During the first Friday of every month, local veterans get together at the Hopkinton Senior Center to have breakfast, socialize, and recall memories. At each gathering, a table is set up at the entrance to honor missing comrades and prisoners of war. The table is set with a white tablecloth, a black napkin, a white candle, and a plate with only a slice of lemon and salt with an empty chair leaning against the table. Every uh, month for the veterans' breakfast, yes. you, you set up this. Uh, I set up the table. table. And the, um, the listing there explains everything on the table the candle, the salt, the lemon, a white plate, a black napkin, and it's always a white tablecloth. And the chair is always put to the side, tilted because somebody's missing. I learned about this when I first came to the senior center. Never knew about it before, but I'm glad I do. The veterans, when they come in, if this table is not set up, where's the table for the missing guy? So they do ask. So I make sure it's here every month at the veterans' breakfast. The tradition was started by a group of fighter pilots who flew in Vietnam known as the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association, also known to some as the River Rats of Vietnam. Other branches of the military soon picked up on the tradition of setting a remembrance table when units or commands gather for dinner and reunions. At the December breakfast, event organizer Henry Alessio talked about Navy veteran Ken McDonald, who was tragically killed two days before Thanksgiving after being struck by a car in Natick. And his home away from home in the early mid-60s was the destroyer USS Pritchett, hull number DD-561. It was a Long Beach boat that alternated between there and the Western Pacific in other words, the Vietnam coast. And starting in August 1964, the deployment was extended and uh, went to the Tonkin Gulf. And we all know what that is or was. In his spare time, along with Art Brooks, uh, they reconstructed, if, if, you may not notice, but as you come in the senior center, up on the wall, there's a cane, and it's a, a Boston Post cane. And uh, 75 or 100 years ago, a newspaper started <coughs> the effort of giving a cane to several dozen towns and the oldest resident in that town. Well, our cane got beat up over time, and uh, Ken and Art redid the knob on the top of the cane and was switched gold. And they got into it and they were molding some gold and found that it was a more challenging effort than they thought. And they had to put a lot of personal funds into getting that cane redone. And they made a duplicate cane or two. So now the oldest resident gives a duplicate. The untrained eye can't tell the difference. I think it's brass so we don't lose that gold cane. But they put an awful lot of effort into that. And also, Ken gave considerable help to John Palmer to resurface the bochi cord out there. And John, if you, if you see him, he was very, very appreciative of what uh, Ken did. And what strikes me is here is a comrade, and he and I used to sit over there, that I bet half of us in the room don't even know, or didn't know. And even if you did know him, you probably didn't know all the stuff that he did. He was just going around helping, helping, helping. He really had a life driven by good works. Ken's neighbor, Bob Latender, recalled memories of Ken. Neighbor, next door neighbor. Known him for 30 years. And quite a friend, we used to uh, chum around a lot. And do projects together around the houses. If he needed something, he would come over and borrow from me, and I borrowed from him whatever he needed. Uh, just this last fall, I let him borrow my rototiller, which is in his garage right now, and uh, 
he was landscaping his land, tilling it up and everything, and uh, we're going to finish that project. He only did a uh, 12 by 30 foot area, put seed in, it was a little late on the seed, but uh, it's going to thrive this spring. He's going to get out there and, and landscape his land for him and finish it up. But it's only going to be missed you know, for 30 years, and uh, great fellow.